Well, good morning. Good morning. It's great to see everyone. Thank you so much for being with us uh, for this special Sunday elective, um, a unique and wonderful opportunity here at um, at Unity Presbyterian Church. We are um, excited and humbled and just grateful uh, to be able to welcome um, Aaron Brooks uh, to be with us this morning. Um, most of you probably know, uh, but Aaron is a wrestler. Uh, he has uh, earned the bronze medal uh, while competing with uh, <laughs> the Aaron's also uh, a U23 world champion, a U.S. national champion, a four-time Olympic um, NCAA uh, Division I national champion, and, um, and most importantly, uh, the grandson of Darlene Williams. <laughs> and, um, and also one who has uh, been uh, shaped by and formed by um, Christian faith uh, throughout, throughout his life. And we are just grateful for the opportunity to have this chance to, uh, to have a conversation together about uh, some and, and all of that. Um, the way we'll go is that we'll, uh, we'll uh, pray here in just a moment, and then um, Aaron and I've got some questions that we'll kind of walk through and, and talk through it together. We're going to try to save at least a couple minutes uh, if there's questions that you might have that will um, allow us to continue this conversation um, and then recognize we are uh, headed to 11 o'clock service too, so unfortunately we can't be here as long as we like, but, uh, but perhaps uh, since um, Aaron and his family have already been in worship this morning that, uh, that he'll be able to stick around just for a moment uh, as well. I'm seeing folks in the back who are reminding me that the closer I keep the microphone to my mouth, the, the better you can hear. So we'll try to do our, our best with that as well. So, well, Aaron, it really is a great gift to have you have you with us. So let us, uh, let us begin with prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do give you thanks and praise for all your many gifts and the opportunity we have to see you at work in our hearts and our lives and certainly throughout the world. Uh, bless our conversation today. Fill us with your spirit as we reflect upon uh, the ways in which you have been a part of Aaron's life and his faith and his wrestling and, and all that you have called him to do. Uh, we give you thanks for all good things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, well, Aaron, uh, just to kind of get us started, um, you have uh, certainly achieved, you know, great success uh, from a young age, and, um, and I certainly know that that doesn't happen overnight. Uh, so tell us a little bit about sort of growing up and, and how you became interested in wrestling. Yeah, so um, I started wrestling when I was five years old, and it was actually a family friend. So my dad used to do real estate, and we were over at a client's house, and I was just behind their couch, think playing high and go see. He had a uh, son around my age, and I saw his wrestling poster with his team, and it was singlets and like a whole different attire than WWE. And so when I saw that, I, I asked my dad, I was like, well, what's this? And he was like, that's real wrestling. And I was like, so you're telling me the other one's fake? And he's like, yeah, I guess it is. And that, that was like a whole different thing, but um, like, this is real wrestling. If you want to try it, I can sign you up um, this next season. And so he signed up me and my brother, Isaiah, his older brother. Um, and yeah, ever since then, I just love wrestling. So that's where it began. Okay, awesome. So five years old, right? Yeah. So I mean, do they teach you at, um, at five, like, all the moves? Or uh, is it something that you kind of grow into? Um, so there's the basics. So you know, you come in, you learn. First pending move, how to put someone on their back, a takedown, um, how do you skate. So I'd say you learn like four things the first year. And then after that, like, um, funny story, I guess. I, I did my first tournament a little bit after the season, and I took third. And then I saw the first place trophy. The guy walked by with the first place trophy, and it was a lot bigger than mine. So I told my dad, I was like, uh, I want that trophy next year. So we started working, and I got the trophy next year. But that's when I really started to learn a lot, of, a lot more wrestling, because um, so his name was Dalton Jackson, actually, so uh, I'll give thanks to him for that. He was motivated me in there. <laughs> Abs absolutely. That's great. So, um, well, good. Well, then kind of the shift over to the church. Was it about that yeah. same time that you were kind of beginning to grow up in, uh, in the church as well? Yeah, so um, I credited a lot of my relationship with Christ with my stepmother, Adrian. So that's actually Grammy's uh, daughter. Because my father, before, um, you know, Adrian came into our lives, we went to church every once in a while. You know, it wasn't... Um, something that we did every week, you know, it was just every once in a while. So when Adrian came in my life, um, we were in the church every weekend as much as we could be. And uh, through tough times as a young kid, I had, I had some troubles, you know, um, when I was in the sixth grade, I think I was battling with anxiety for a while, but she always led me to my devotions. And to this day, up until college, like that's whenever, you know, I truly started to seek the Lord, but I knew where to go. So it's really cool to see, um, the youth in the church and what you guys are doing, because I'm like, that, uh, it goes a long way. The seeds are planted, 
you know, and for me that is what really brought me to Christ is having that foundation. So, excellent. Oh, that's wonderful. Certainly, um, yes, in our own families, that's where that um, uh, relationship can begin, yeah. right? Uh, and then um, many of us are blessed with with others from the the church or Bible studies or or other ways who become mentors for us as well. You've had some folks like that along the way. Um, when I got to college, uh, big time. So they, they do a good job at Penn State. They have an FC group. But um, a lot of teammates, even the older guys on my team when I came in, and um, just mentored me in that way, you know, because life's, life's tough. So having someone that, to go to that uh, had that same value, perspective as me. You know, there's a couple of people I make phone calls to um, that helped me a lot. So Awesome. Very good. Very good. Um, as you can see, we've got a great, uh, great group and uh, class here uh, who are with us. Um, in particular, we've invited uh, Unity's confirmation class, who are um, eighth graders who are in the process of, of thinking about and, and learning about uh, their own faith and, and what does it mean to be a follower of Christ. Uh, they're getting ready to, to make their own public declaration of faith. Um, thinking about them even more broadly, you know, for all of us, what, is, what, does, it mean, what does it mean to you to be a, a follower of Jesus? Yeah, um, that's my identity, but I think the first thing that comes to mind when hearing this is the sacri uh, sacrifice and suffering that comes with it. Because um, that's one thing you don't always hear you know, when you first come to the Lord. You know, but as you get to know Him, you, uh, you have those same burdens, like you said today, about carrying your cross. You know, it looks different for all of us, but love is sacrifice, love is suffering, and I think um, that's something that I'm reminded of daily. But... As a newborn Christian at the time, I'd still consider myself a newborn, uh, not too knowledgeable. But um, yeah, suffering and sacrificing, and that's what brings me closer to him, I think. And even just speaking in wrestling, like that's one thing that's helped me um, just become a better wrestler. It's just a byproduct of my faith. But knowing what I'm doing it for, and knowing that it doesn't define me, but I represent him, and anything I go through is to bring me closer to him. And so uh, that's what it means to me. That's great, absolutely. So, um, yes, and to make that um, you know that connection to, uh, to to wrestling as well, right? Um, can you say a little more about how your faith kind of impacts uh, your approach to wrestling, or or maybe training, or yeah. what does it mean to compete as a as a Christian? Yeah, I just think like it just takes the burden away. You know, like uh, like Christ tells us not to care about the worldly things. So even the titles, the possessions, um, like it's funny because everyone's like, "Where's your medal?" I was like, "I don't know where it's at." Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's just, I remember I looked back before I came to Christ and wrestling then, like everything was kind of like life or death. Like I have to, I have to be somewhere, I have to do this, I have to, uh, it was a burden, the best way to put it. And wrestling now, you know, it's, it's a gift. You know, God, this is where I'm called to be right now. Um, that may change, calling changes. But just free, you know, and that, that is when you see the true gifts, I think, when I wrestle um, without the worldly chains and you know expectations and or i'm the number one guy i have to defend this or I have to prove something it's like you know i don't so absolutely because your your identity is found yeah right it's found in christ uh and the other pieces are certainly things to be be celebrated yeah right, on top but uh, but not ultimately what what defines you yeah, yeah that's uh, that's a wonderful message and wonderful thing all of us i think remember and need to remember uh, in the midst of the many ways whether it's wrestling or or life, or uh, our family, or jobs. Yeah. It's easy to let those other things kind of define us. Yeah. So. Well, um, was there a moment, kind of in your in your history background growing up, um, when sort of um, when you knew that you like loved wrestling, and then there was a moment when you like, oh yeah, this is something I'm really good at, right? Because those could be different things, right? So, um, I guess my family could tell you when that I consider to be good. I don't really. Like if you ask me, I always thought I was pretty good. <laughs> but I think uh, after my second year of wrestling, so I've been seven years old, one of my third year of wrestling, um, it's everything I did. So me and my father at the time, we'd always, well, still my father, but at that time, <laughs> we'd, uh, every weekend we were traveling somewhere to wrestle. You know, so um, yeah, it's just, I loved it. And never got tired of it, I think, is when I realized it. But that changes too, like once again, love is. <coughs> A part of discipline, so uh, but yeah, since I was young, I think just God just put it on my heart. Uh, I love wrestling, yeah, that's incredible, very good. I know, um, for, for many folks uh, that I've 
you know, gotten a chance to be accustomed with who, um, who do things like the sports or others that take that kind of dedication really well um, and, and do them with excellence. Um, at one point, you can tell when you don't have to um, push them to practice. Yeah. anymore, right? They decide they're going to go on their own, or they're, this is something they're going to work with. Have you had that kind of experience, too? Yeah, um, so when I first came into college, uh, this has been my whole life. I'm always smiled at practice and like had to get time. I work hard, but uh, one of my teammates, uh, his name's Carter, and he came up, he was like, why are you always smiling at practice, man? And I was like, I don't know, I love, I love practice. I love wrestling. And he does, too, but I'm like, man, I just, like, when I'm at practice, it's, yeah, I just love wrestling, best way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Oh, well, good, well, good. So, um, well, yeah, you know, we do the things that we love and, uh, and find sort of great joy and, and celebration in them. Um, but, uh, but that doesn't mean that they become necessarily always easy, yeah. right? And that sometimes, um, as the scriptures tell us, sometimes uh, even being called children of God, the, the world doesn't understand, yeah. right? It doesn't know what we're doing. Uh, and... Uh, um, and I understand you've had some experiences like that as well. What does it mean to be a um, yeah, follower of Jesus in the midst of a, a public kind of realm in which some people yeah. may, may find that to be a bit, at least a, a question, if not maybe even an objection? Yeah, I think that goes to, once again, just the sacrifice for the Lord and the suffering. I remember um, like two years ago, after one of my NCAA matches, just proclaiming the truth. And there was some persecution that came after that. But I remember at first, like I was a little frustrated, but then I saw the scriptures, and you know, it says, blessed who are uh, persecuted for righteousness sake. And once again, like the outside, those who aren't of Christ would understand, you know, it's like, um, and that can be frustrating, but then again, I think that helps us to live in love and the hope and prayer that they gain understanding, because um, I look at it this way, like the people who crucified Christ thought they did God a service. They just didn't understand, you know, um, so I think, uh, it's, it's, but that's a part of it. Once again, picking up that burden, those on the outside, the Pharisees, the Roman Empire, they didn't understand Christ, right. you know, but um, he still loved them and he still died for them and he still gave his life for them. So I think, uh, once again, that was just a part of my walk two years ago that really brought me closer to him. And even to this day, at the Olympic Games, um, I lost in the semifinals and over in the European countries and especially in wrestling, it's predominantly Muslim. But I remember, uh, just like the, I guess the, once again, persecution, but the backlash, like, you know, where's Christ now, and where was your Holy Spirit, and um, those kind of things, right, and I'm like, reminding myself, at first I might get frustrated, but then, you know, I'm grieved, because like, man, these, they're so far from the truth, you know, and I said, I'll be a fool for Christ's sake, you know, because he was a fool for my sake, you know, like, he came down, humbled himself um, in the form of man, you know, so I think that's just a part of my suffering, is whatever I go, and, you know, they're mocking him, but... Christ knows. Oh, absolutely, sure. So, um, do you think um, probably the world in which in which we live today, with um, social media and, um, and the, the pressures that, that come in that respect, um, how do you find that plays into both your own perspective of being able to share your faith, but also some of the challenges in the folks who would never say something to your face, yeah. who obviously <laughs> will say it say it online, right? Yeah. Um, social media is is interesting because. Um, I think 95% of it's negative. Um, now there's some things you might get to see some funny memes or like I'll watch some reels and make you laugh. But um, I think it's a, a, a great chance to proclaim things, but also then again, it's it's still interaction. It's still, it's it's social time, right? It's like if we're face to face, uh, but people are more comfortable, but I think it's still part of it. Or you still might get persecuted on social media as you might be in person. And so I think um, anything you go into, once again, walk in the spirit. Um, use discernment, pray for discernment, because uh, the devil's a liar. So. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. That's a good reminder for us, for sure. So, oh, well, good. Well, you kind of um, shifted a little bit to um, tell us about the Olympics. I bet a lot of people here would be love, love to hear a little more about uh, about your experience experience there. So, so tell us, you know, how do you how do you make the team? Uh, let's start there, and then we'll kind of walk through some of the experience along the way. So, uh, making the team, they have it. The trials in April. And so what happens is, the year before, you have to kind of qualify for the Olympic team trials. So not everyone's allowed in the trials, but throughout that year leading up to the trials, um, everyone's trying to qualify to get in the Olympic trials. And then it's about 16 people, I want to say. And the winner of that tournament faces, uh, I guess, the returning champ type oh, wow. thing. Okay. So if you win that mini tournament, 
even going to face the guy who won the world medal or Olympic medal the year before in the finals in the series of best three. So first to win two matches. And so um, I wasn't sitting out in the finals. So I wrestled the mini tournament and then I wrestled uh, the returning champ at the time. So, but it's, it's, it's pretty gruesome. Once again, going back to who carried me through that, the Lord. Cause as everyone knows, uh, the wrestlers in here at least, sometimes a weight cut, you know, weight cut's tough. And uh, so what a weight cut is, is so usually I weigh like 213 pounds and I have to get down at the time was 189. So I thought about price a lot. Because <laughs> it's suffering. Like it's like, but once again it brought me closer to him and uh, but it's tough. But then and then you wrestle. So you do that and then you wrestle. Right. So so you've already lost <laughs> lost the weight or worked to get the weight off, and then you've actually got to go and compete yeah. in this in this wow. Now, I remember in high school there were guys who like would walk around with trash bags. There's got to yeah. be some more. There's a newer like, like okay. you get a suit. Like, <laughs> trash bags like last resort. Right? <laughs> okay, just trying to sweat your way through the day, right? Okay, so um, all right, so um, so you, you're wrestling, I guess, in a, a single elimination, double yeah. elimination tournament to to make the yeah. make the team. And then, um, and then you're victorious there. Yeah. Uh, what's the experience of kind of going from that moment? How much time, like, before you actually headed to Paris? Yeah. So that was, I think, uh, April 20th. And then I was headed to Paris the 21st of July. So two months, three months. Um, so kind of a quick turnaround, you know, because then you got training camps throughout the summer. Uh, USA wrestling coach, he wants you here. This place, this place. So pretty busy summer. Is there, um, uh, I don't know for different sports, is there a variety of um, publicity and things that comes along with it as well? Yeah, so wrestling is not the most popular sport, but anything in the Olympics, like it was, uh, I say a lot more politics, but there was a lot more politics, a lot more interviews. Because um, you got the NBC interviews and you have the Team USA, um, Olympic Committee, then you have yours in general with USA Wrestling, so it just adds a lot more of that uh, politics. Gotcha. So it's not just like go to the gym and wrestle and practice. There's a bit of yeah. A, a so it's one of the days were like a media day, and it was like six hours long. Wow. And I uh, I like to snack, so it was tough. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to put that weight back on. You yeah. have to take it back on, right? I understand. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Well, good. Well, good. All right. So um, so you headed to Paris. Uh, did you stay in the village, or how does that go? Yeah, so I stayed in the village for a little bit. I mean, when I first got there, I stayed in the village, and then the nights I wrestled, I stayed there. So um, the beds are cardboard, <laughs> and the food is, um, I don't want to complain, but the beds are cardboard. <laughs> beds were, yeah, they really were cardboard. The beds are cardboard. Oh my goodness. But okay. at the first, I was like, I kind of like it. And then like two nights after, it kind of hurt. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Well, good. Um, the, uh, the opening ceremony was a little different this year. Yeah. Did you uh, participate in that? Um, so I didn't. I didn't attend that. And so a lot of people reached out and they're like, well, did you know what was going to happen there? And I was like, no. Um, but why, I was at peace not going. You know, I, I think the spirit for that. But also, like, the truth, I didn't go at first because I'm really flat-footed. So um, my back, my lower back would have just been killing me. And so I was like, I'm not going to go. And then didn't regret not going. Okay. So, so did you, were you able to encounter any of the other athletes along the way? I saw a couple. Um, track, gymnastics, tennis. So it was pretty cool. But everyone's kind of like focused and locked in. Then, so it's just passing by. Gotcha. Sure. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, um, then what's the sort of the tournament at the Olympics itself like? Yeah, so the tournament's uh, even smaller. One, like, Well, maybe 16. Um, but four matches I wrestled, and so you wrestle three matches in one day, and then your medal matches the next day. Wow. So kind of the same thing as trials, a little different, but um, yeah, so make weight, three hours later, you wrestle. So I wrestle the first round, and then second round, back to back, and then you go get a break uh, before the semis, came back. And then after the semis, um, after I lost, I got on the scale, and <laughs> I was like 15 pounds over. And so, um, immediately go back to the hotel, start to get my weight down. But once again, I think for me, um, just how it brought me closer to the Lord. Because, you know, we have our ways we think it may look. You know, I'm like, okay. Like, and this is why I try to have expectations. Because you never know what to expect um, in this life. You know, that's why you put your trust in the Lord. 
But once again, that initial like persecution, people, you know, mocking the Lord and these things, and I'm like, all right, well, that was your chance. I'm talking to God, like that was your chance to show them your might, you know, like. And I'm like, I'm mad at God because I can't be mad at God. Like I know, I, like, there's no reason to be. You can never be mad at God, you know. So I'm like, hey, that was our chance. But what do I know, you know? But all that in that, that split second, and um, getting right to the scale, checking my weight, I'm over. Like I gotta just get the next quick thing, and you know. How can I represent him in this, you know, regardless of what I wanted, you know, like, um, so pray for that, pray for strength. But I was up all night getting the weight down and it's kind of reflected on prayer, like, I'm very blessed and he's going to make something out of this. He always does. So, you know, just, uh, and he is, he has. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes, I think you're, um, I mean, to be at that, at that level, right? I mean, goal is what you want, but yeah. uh, but then being able to come back the next day, yeah. still be victorious, right? So yeah. tell us about the, the, the bronze medal match. How'd that go? It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was cool. Like, I remember when I came out and then, well, the, so it's a little different. Like, I guess foreign style wrestling, they wrestle different than American style. So like, not to talk about this too much. American style likes to, you know, like to go forward, pull in your head, wear your back out. And then the foreign style is kind of like upright kind of like taunting, like touch my legs, um, we'll defend it, no big deal. So it was a little different, the guy's kind of standing straight up. Uh, okay. But um, I just thought of like a football, so last double was like a football tackle kind of, everyone knows that, and I just put my face in his chest and ran my feet like twice, and then <laughs> next thing I know, the match was over, so. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, oh, we're good. Well, I know we were watching it from home and it seemed like it took a little longer than that, but. Uh, <laughs> Wow, that's incredible. So it's like two periods, yeah. six or three minutes uh, each or yes. something. Is that how it works? Okay. Yeah. yeah? Good. Very good. Very good. Well, um, what's it like to be kind of on the podium? See the see the flag go up and big metal around your neck, those sorts of things. Um, mainly I was just laughing at my family. So I'll find them and I'll smile and I'm like, because uh, growing up you, you uh, compete a lot and doing podium stuff. So it's cool, but I always try to find my loved ones and just smile, so Oh, well, Aaron, thank you very much. Um, let's see, any um, any sort of final thing you'd want to share with everyone before we take some questions um, about faith or about life or what kind of things are you trying to pass on to others in this moment? Yeah, so um, this is on my heart. But thinking about, and just talking about it, uh, like goals, like there's, we have our goals, once again, our own perspectives or what we may want in life. And then there's reality. And I think like love surpasses that. Love surpasses all. And so I think about me wrestling, and this goes to your walk with the Lord too. Like we all fall short of the glory, and you may not always reach your goal, but your love for Christ, your love for whatever you're doing, that surpasses that. So I think about the times I have fallen short, but I, I love wrestling. Just use that example, you know. And because I love wrestling, I get back up, and I go again and again and again. You know, it's the same thing in our walks with, with Christ. Is you know, we fall short of the glory. You know, we may, um, you know, just be in a tough time, but it's your love for Christ surpasses that. You, know, you might miss the goal, but Christ did it for us. So even the same thing, it kind of correlates. You know, it's just that uh, it doesn't look how we always think, but you do it because you love. You do things because you love Christ. You do it because you love the sport. You love your job, um, whatever it may be. So that was just a marvel. Ah, amen. Thank you very much. Well, good. Uh, we've got some time for a couple questions. Uh, anyone with one here? Oh. Me? Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, first of all, I'd like to say how much I uh, enjoyed watching you wrestle and how proud of, of both uh, what you've accomplished and your faith. Uh, my questions relate to your future plans. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what you're thinking about as far as the weights you may be wrestling at at the World Championships and the next Olympics and how that relates to your decision you made on what you wrestled at in the previous Olympics. Yeah, so definitely going up a weight class. <laughs> I knew that even when I still had to make the last weight class. But yeah, definitely going to boys class and then um who knows, God knows, a couple years from now where I'm at, but right now I'm up to the next weight class, so it's two or three, so it's a lot easier for me. Very good, but uh but hope at this point maybe to see you in Los Angeles? Yeah, God willing. Okay, very good. <laughs> Who else might have a question for us? So, can you talk a little about your relationship with God and how that can help you mentor younger people? Yeah, I think um, 
even when like a friend comes to me, it's not a young person, but like just teach what the Bible says. You know, I think there's my perception, my understandings, um, my opinions, you know, but my relationship with Christ, like I can point them to what he says, you know, because I know like the heart can be deceitful. So maybe one day, you know, I like red, the next day I like blue. Um, and so for me, it's just knowing that I'm guiding them to him. I'm pointing them to what Christ says, not what I say. And so it's a sense of peace because, you know, I might be like, well, did I say the wrong thing? Did I say the right thing? Well, Christ never says the wrong thing. Um, he always says the right thing. And so I think for me, just having somewhere where I can point people to, you know, because, um, like I said, who am I at the end of the day? You know, but point them to him, I can sleep at night. And, yeah. We got some back there, too. Mine's just a wrestling question. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite wrestling format? You like the freestyle, folk style, Greco? I mean, I know you competed in freestyle, but yeah. What do you like better? Um, I like I like all of them except Greco's last. But I say uh, <laughs> so Greco's like when you can't touch the legs, so they're kind of like dinosaurs, T Rexes, walk through there. But I like um, I love folk style for certain reasons. I love freestyle for certain reasons. So they're both unique. So I said I don't have a favorite now. Now I don't wrestle folk style anymore because I graduated college. But um, now I miss it already because. I'm not gonna be wrestling it. But um, yeah, I love both of them. They're both very important. And it helps, folk style helps you get better at freestyle, and freestyle helps you get better at folk style, so. And Greco. Greco? Great. And to the back here, hold on. I love Jesus too, but I wanna know how you lost so much weight. <laughs> <laughs> it's not healthy how it happens. A lot of saunas, uh, sweatsuits, yeah. just stuff. Uh, just water weight. <laughs> Christian role model is very important for you. Are you able to go into schools or other places to talk to you? Yeah, so recently, um, I say last week, I went to a, uh, a youth school and was able to speak. But as you know, it's tough and in this world. You know, it's not really, uh, it's frowned upon, honestly, on the outside. And so the times I do get the chance, I'm very grateful for it because, uh, yeah, it's, and that's it's sad, but you don't get too much. And so I hope that, and once again, going back to social media, you know, I hope that that um, plays a big role in that too, because not many times are you getting invited to go speak somewhere, but hopefully they come across it and they see the little platform, so. Hey, so when I told my brother, he's a wrestling coach at a high school in Spartanburg, South Carolina, that I knew your grandmother, he was like, oh wow, he is so impressive because he was telling me that when you beat David Taylor, David Taylor was known as the, possibly the best wrestler that there had been. So I just was wondering, what was that like? Um, it's weird because, you know, for me, I'm just wrestling. You know, so I don't really think about the opponent too much. You know, I think um, in anything, like I never want to make it bigger than it is. Like there's God and there's everything else. And so for me, I was like, I, I'm wrestling the guy who's sitting in the finals, you know, um, but very skilled, very skilled wrestler. But uh, once again, I, I don't, I try not to make things bigger than, than they are because there's only one thing bigger than everything. All right, I think we've got time maybe for one more, if it's one more question. Oops, okay. Yeah, real quick, Darren, um, I'm gonna go back to the wrestling questions. Okay, are you going back to Happy Valley number one for the next four years? And could you just give us a, just a, quick like overview of what that wrestling room must be like. Because a lot of the David Taylors and the Ed Roots, I mean, they're all about there, right? I mean, it has to be full of great partners. And yeah, so um, so right now, yeah, I live in State College, and I kind of, I paid the train there and help out the college guys and also, you know, go wrestle uh, tournaments around the co uh, country and world. And so it's a tough room. And I, I thought about Pastor Matt, um, we are talking about your son earlier, and how, you know, it's tougher when you have competition in your own thing, but it's also a blessing, because iron sharpens iron. And so I think, you know, there was a point in time where I was in the victim mentality of like, you know, 
well, I'm in the same wrestling room as David Taylor, and he could be watching me, and he could be, you know. And when I was in that victim mentality, like, there was no authority in Christ I was using. You know, I think, like, when I realized that everything I had in front of me, like, I was placed in the right place. God put me here for a reason. He knows when you guys see, uh, I guess, what happened this year. You know, and, um, but iron sharpens iron. So being in a room where, you know, there's people who are better or there's guys who want to be better, you know, I think is a blessing. Um, and you're protected. So I think, it, yeah. And, and Coach Sanderson does an amazing job. I mean, it's incredible what's come out of Penn State for the last few years. Yeah. Years. I credit the dodgeball. We played all dodgeball. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if not, everyone might be tense. I mean, we play dodgeball, it's come in. Have a good time, and then you get to practice. <laughs> very good. Well, uh, Aaron, thank you very much once again. This has been an amazing gift to have you here. Thank you very much. Let us uh, I'll close with a, a moment of prayer, and then um, I think Aaron can stick around a little bit for others who might want to come up and talk with him in a more individual way, and maybe some photos and that sort of thing as well. So there's a medal around here somewhere, I think. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Okay, yeah, Starlene's got the medal. So, uh, all right, uh, well, let us pray. Gracious God, we do give you thanks for uh, your amazing gifts, the ways in which you have um, called us to particular ministries and particular talents, and uh, we particularly give you thanks this day for Aaron and his willingness to, to share his faith and his life with us and, um, and so many. Uh, we ask that you or your spirit would continue to be with him uh, in the work that uh, still remains ahead, the opportunities he will have to both wrestle and to uh, testify to your greatness and your presence in his life. We put our trust and our faith in you as we continue to seek to follow you faithfully each and every day. Uh, we pray these things in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much. It was a great gift. This is it. So.